That's how like <laughs> that's how close I just finished. <laughs> I don't look at notes when people send them to me. So okay, well, fair <laughs> enough. Um, I feel yeah. I gen- I don't know. I generally. I mean, I always I'll send people my notes because maybe they want to look at them. But I found my personal, uh, whatever is to not look at them ahead of time. Well, your note taking style is completely different than mine. You're kind of like riffing about what what the things might mean, but I usually literally put what they are in the notes so I remember what happened. Is that like oh, like the Arnold Schwarzenegger commentaries? Yes, yes, that's what I do with my notes. I'm like, oh, you see, here's where where her breasts. I grab her breasts. What was that like recent? I don't know. Something, I... Some recent thing that got leaked where it was like someone's breast got bigger. Oh, it's the Terminator 3 thing where it's like, oh, her breasts get bigger in the movie theater because <laughs> she sees the breasts and her breasts get bigger. <laughs> I was thinking of when he explains the joke in Commando. <laughs> I haven't even seen that one. I've I've watched like all of the Total Recall one, but I haven't like really delved into the other ones. What does he say to the guy that he kills on the airplane in Commando? Do you remember? I forget. Anyway, he says something really snarky, and then on the commentary track, he explains the joke. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I a still... really... He's like, it's, <laughs> it's funny because he's dead. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Like, that's, that's part of why Total Recall is so great, is because not only it's like the commentary is like uh, Paul Verhoeven is just saying crazy shit and Schwarzenegger is just saying what happens, but it's like they literally, like Verhoeven believes that it was all in his head, and Schwarzenegger believes that all of it really happened. Like they have the two opposite, like beliefs Great. over what that plot is. They yeah, it's yeah. perfect. <laughs> they should. <laughs> have you ever played uh, Elisa's Micron? Yes. How was it? This is like a micro Korg, but maybe a little better. Okay, just they had one at the at the hard off. <laughs> How much is it? It's like just over two hundred bucks. Well, that seems like a little much. You think I don't so? know. It depends on how much you really want. Like one of those, I don't. I just don't want one of those anymore. Like I got the the JX. What is it? The JX08. That's like kind of the the Roland one that has twenty voices and that one was like three something and even that it just didn't sound good well the, like i've been I, using the monologue which is really good yeah that sounds it, good but it's somewhat limited right like sometimes you want to yeah. get this digitally shim- not digital but shimmery sounds which that one is fully incapable of you know i just i want like sound quality more than i care about versatility it's like i, mean, I, I do have something that's sort of a compromise which is the peak but the peak is mm. like very expensive so i mean because <laughs> uh, like the um the juno 60 when you record it sometimes there's kind of a wishy sound in the back i guess just because it's so old or something like chorus no it's the chorus is off huh and is it, well yeah it could just be interference i think just or, yeah that and old. age but it still sounds good and, and i'm like well you know it makes it sound like boards of canada or something right slightly broken down since <laughs> i think i think it's like the the just shit that sounds good never like always ages better than like that interesting new because like chemical brothers were always doing a lot of like listen you never heard anything that sounds like this before you know but but it doesn't sound good like like i heard that i don't know i was listening to like some donna summer and like the album she did right after what the which whichever the her like 1980 record has like the the lead track has like this incredible like bass synth on it that sounds a lot like the uh like the Akai that you gave me the AX60. Mm-hmm. It's like that just sounds so fucking the, the synth on that sounds so good that I'm just like it doesn't matter that this is kind of cheesy, right? You know, right. I think I, I, just dropped. That's okay. just a personal, but that's a personal thing. I think some people don't really give a shit, but it's like I like the. The thing where your hair stands up because the thing sounds cool. Oh yeah, that's the whole thing with a Moog. The bass on that's a you know a ball yeah. rubber, right? So uh, yeah, the, exactly. The, I will say the um synth that the the software synth that I comes the closest to analog that I've got would be that um v, VCS three thing. Did you ever get that? I think you've paid VCS3. for it. VCS but... three. I don't. Is that Arturia? No. Um. I, it's some weird like 
uh, independent thing, I think. And it's uh, based on the, you know, the, the uh, what's the name of that one? The one that Pink Floyd used in, uh, you know, the uh, BBC radiophonic workshop used in the 60s. So makes Doctor Who sounds. Is that like an Oberheim or something? No, no, it's like modular. But it's oh. like digital modular. It could, Ow. this could be Arturia because I see Arturia has a VCS3. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And anyway. Um, oh, EMS made it. Okay. It was one of those suitcase things. Right, right, right. So it's, you can totally yeah. get Doctor Who sounds out of it and stuff, right? But Yeah, um, I mean, they're really good VC, uh, VSDs. Like Roland made one that, no, I'm just like saying all that, of Roland's. I've used a lot ones. of them. I've used a lot yeah. of them. And that's the one that, um, was the only one where I like never felt the need to say replace the bass with the Moog or something. Yeah, I've used, I've used, it's just some of them are good and some of them are bad, but it seems like usually like the Micron and the Microcorg kind of use older tech for mm, that. Right. Like there are VSTs that sound way better than the Microcorg. Mm. So I'm going to go with that. Okay. In that case. That's probably a reasonable thought. Let's see what's on my iPad at the moment. Uh, the Animog is uh, not two, just yeah. the first one. That's that's pretty good. Animog's it, great. Yeah, I love the Animog. Uh, again, does not ever sound fully analog, but uh, I well, Poly like... Six is okay. Um, I, I use it occasionally. I have a, a something called a Cassini, which um is kind of a specific. Mm. So yeah, yeah, I'm aware of the Cassini, the Alteria um... ISM, which is okay to work with but usually i end up replacing those tracks with the real analogs uh of course right. the, the funk box i love um i have a model oh i have the model d from moog on here because it was free when the pandemic started <laughs> i think i maybe got that too but yeah there's is there's an arturias are both pretty much they're of a similar similar quality and that's that is also like a really good uh I've got it's the, more fun to use that on a computer than it is to use the SEO2, which has the tiny knobs. I've got the Magellan, which I like because you can uh, change the frequencies, which most digital synths won't let you do. Hmm. Like you can go like, you know, like make it like 432s or something, right? Are you talking about the sequencer specifically? No, 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 no the, the frequency of the tone, like how it's tuned. Most stuff on Apple will not let you, or an iPad will not let you do that. The frequency of the, the like oscillator? If middle, like, yeah, yeah, like middle C is at like 440 hertz and you can detune oh, you can like 432 hertz or something. Oh, you can just change like the tuning scale? That's So, so that's what that I, so I use that. that. Right, right. That's the only one I have that will let you do that. So I use that to make the binaural drones. Neat. So. Yeah, the, um, the Peak has like micro tuning where you could do like, you could tune all the voices every one of the eight voices differently it's like got a bunch of insane shit that i've barely it's got like a pitch drift thing where you could have like the 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 voices will go out of tune a certain amount mm. it's like it's that thing is crazy like it has everything that the microcorg has but in addition it just does all this stuff like you can detune each of the three oscillators against itself so you could basically make what's like three super saws oh yeah the moog would let, let you do that no but it's like you can't detune you can't detune an oscillator you have to detune an oscillator against another oscillator right right and this you can detune each of them against Separately? themselves so oh, it's okay. like having six oscillators ah uh, okay oh right it uses gotcha. fpgas which are like yeah. fi field programmable gate arrays which are basically simulations of compute of circuits mm. so it has like simulated circuits for it's, it's like fucking nuts oh, the know. one the one i really liked that i was using about six months ago a lot with again for the binaural stuff was the um you know synth one now that's not it but do you know synth, synth one one is it, i've that's heard a, of it i that's think because it's free right that company makes some relatively cheap paid for synths and uh, one of them is the vhs synth i think i might mention it to you before but uh, I highly recommend VHS synth. VHS synth. Yeah. What I found out this crazy is like the guy who made the very first like drum program that I ever fucking got is making still making like iOS apps. Like I'm sure, why not? Boom or something like that. He this made the, the like hammerhead synth, which is a drum drum machine. Oh, neat.
That's interesting. Is that was that VHS sense? I'm looking at VHS synth right now. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I do recommend that one because was it like five bucks or something? It's just four lo fi and chill with this a uh maybe it's a maybe it's a special deal, but I, yeah. I might have got over four. What I mean, wasn't that expensive. I don't remember. It says it says limited time with four dollars, regular ten dollars, but there's no like actual <laughs> it doesn't show ten dollars on the store. It might just yeah, be I feel, just yeah, I feel <laughs> I think they're just saying that because I think that's what I paid for it like a year ago. Anyway, um I don't know if you ever listened to those binaural collections I did, but that uses a lot of the VHS synths on it. A little bit. I think those were kind of long, but I listened they to are long. some that's, of them. That's the point of them, right? They're supposed to be like back in the background for long periods of time while you're doing something else, right? I guess so. You're not really supposed to sit there and listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I listened to them while I was playing Halo or something. Well, yeah, sure, that works. Uh, I guess we should go ahead and start doing this thing. All right, this thing. Welcome to Imprisoned in Prison on uh, the Prison or Prison Cast. I'm your host, the yes, Colonel. You are. This is my co-host, also the Colonel. We're all there. You can have more than one Colonel in the military. I'm your host, Matthew Comages, and I'm not. I man, I, I did that. Okay, that's why I did that yesterday. Sorry, I did. I introduced myself as Luke on the Sci-Fi Sanctuary for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't doing Face Off. No, we were doing um, King Kong Escapes. <laughs> so it really okay, get any sense? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, that had happened, and 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 I'm Mark Malik. Then okay. Sorry, I'm just did, I'm like do, doing the same bit. For, did I mean, you watch this reason. and it got in your head? No, I hadn't watched this yet. So it's, just, <laughs> just, it's like how quantum, how events quantumly ripple backward and forward through time, right? So, mm. well, uh, let's uh, uh, let's do this here trivia, which may or may not actually be the trivia. It might be a different trivia, and this trivia's body. You want to say the name of the episode first? The name of the episode is "Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling." Do you start hearing like some terrible bluegrass song every time you hear the title? Well, not there might be something. Me, oh, there might, darling. There might be something coming up in the trivia just for you. Yay! <laughs> Pat Jackson hey, I, I, is here. Okay, go ahead. No, I, I saw a reference. It is from a song or something. I just I, I'm bending my own song, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's probably not that far off. <laughs> okay, I I didn't research what the original song sounded like. Okay, uh, so Pat Jackson is here to direct for the fourth and final time after directing Hammer into Anvil last week. Uh, Vincent Tilsley returns to write, having previously written The Chimes of Big Ben, meaning that he's written most of the episodes which are primarily set outside the village. This episode was 14th in production order and aired 13th on December 22nd, 1967. It was produced while Patrick McGoon was in America filming the movie Ice Station Zebra, a film with a lower rating on IMDb than any Prisoner episode. Oops. The episode title and the background music throughout are derived from the American song The Ballad of High Noon, also called Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling," which were introduced in the 1952 film High Noon. It's got to be better than the crap I was singing. Sorry, go ahead. It's got to be better than what I was singing. Maybe. (laughs) Jury's out. Our new number six for this episode a.k.a. the Colonel, is Nigel Stock, a veteran of stage, screen, radio, and TV with 140 screen credits. He previously had appeared in The Password is Courage, The Dam Busters, and Goodbye, Mr. Chips. If you give the, the password that way, they'll kill you. The password is cur. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get it all because you didn't finish the word. Okay. The password is you have to get the film developed from a year ago and then put on your special glasses. I have this role here right. from 10 years ago that I still haven't developed, so. I think I have some roles from, like, the 90s I haven't developed. I don't know what I to do with it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I feel, it's at some point you feel weird about it. You probably could mail it off pretty easily, but. Yeah. Feel weird about it. Anyway, new number two is played by Clifford Evans, a mostly TV actor. You can find him in My Partner the Ghost and The Human Jungle. 
Janet Portland, a.k.a. number six's fiance, a.k.a. number six's only love interest ever, is played by Zena Walker. She was better known for theater than film, but you can still see her on screen in many TV series such as The Madness and The Fighting Cock. Janet's father, Sir Charles Portland, is played by John Wentworth. He was a seasoned TV actor who appeared in The Sex Game and A Hundred Years of Humphrey Hastings, as well as It's a Terrible Waste of an Egg. That's Finally, an Obi-Wan title again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all three of those should be combined in one title. I am sure you could put them all side by side on YouTube and upload them. Hmm. So you should. Uh, finally, our mad scientist Seltzman is played by Hugo Schuster, a German actor who can also be suited, who can also be seen in Goodness, How Sad, High Fury, and The Third Man. This episode was his final acting credit, and he would pass away in 1976 at the age of 89. Trivia end. Okay, I will tell you the story of Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling. We cannot can't shorten this title. I have to say the full thing every time, right? Nope. Unless it's on YouTube where it says "Do not forsake me." But go ahead. How could they? I will say when the title they forsake up, for, when they the, forsook when, the title. Yeah, when the title comes up on the title screen, it is just like that's that's too many words on the screen. <laughs> it's like you could tell they were like, "Oh, could could use a bigger screen for this." I guess it's like when the cats away, the mice will play, sort of thing, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> The powers that be behind the village want to track down one Professor Seltzman, an inventor who has learned how to swap minds. They've got enough of his tech to run a prototype and swap number six's mind with a man called the Colonel. Six awakens back in his London flat in the body of the Colonel. He first tries to reconstruct his life, but a year has passed. His fiance is skeptical and his future father-in-law is pretty well in on the plan. Six gets enough evidence to convince his fiance, as well as Professor Seltzman, um, who is hanging out in Austria. They make their way back to the village where more body swapping ensues. Six ends up right where he's supposed to be, but Seltzman ends up in the colonel's body and immediately hightails it out of the village. The colonel gets the short end of the stick and instantly dies in Seltzman's body. And then that there's a and you see Patrick McGoon's face, which you don't see in the rest of the episode for much. Yeah, he's trapped <laughs> back in the production of this series. Right? Yeah, really. OK, <laughs> this, this was if the show had continued past 17 episodes, this was actually going to kind of be the format. Not that McGoon yes. would be replaced in every episode, but that he'd be sent on missions outside the village. I saw that. Yes. It's, and which, also there were going to be just it was going to be like the the intro would be like the cold open where you would find out where he was going to go and then you get the intro and then he goes does stuff yeah i didn't i didn't yeah i mean i'm not like oh i hated it or anything but i'm definitely like no nah, i don't like a cold open on this show didn't work didn't work as well and also um, it's, i guess the problem this cold open is like not particularly interesting either <laughs> no it's not interesting it throws us into a bunch of people we've never seen before talking looking talking at like, about someone we've never heard of yeah, so it, pictures of scenery. So, so this is my least favorite episode of the show so far. I came in expecting to, pro to kind of hate it. Um, I actually I, liked it more than I thought I was going to. So maybe we're coming from I, opposite directions. Maybe me. I didn't hate place, it. I don't know. I didn't hate it, but it has number one. The guy who plays the colonel is not very charismatic and is not really trying to even play number six. I thought he had some nice vocal cadences that went along the lines. I mean, I mean, he's fine. He's like Roger Moore. Okay, he's Roger. It's Moore like, what too. if Roger Magoons. Moore? What if John Sean Connery just like transmorphed into Roger Moore halfway through a Bond movie, like like Doctor <laughs> Who style? Yeah. <laughs> um, also, it has kind of the things I hate the most about the spy genre, which is that at some point all this stuff just conveniently happened. He just finds a bunch of things in a roll of film that happened to have been developed a year ago that relate directly to the, I, I, I kind of hate that stuff. Mm. It's like just to move the plot along spies just can basically see through time. Yeah. They're smart. Well, again, he, he might have a different job. We're not a hundred percent sure he's a spy. 
I mean, he is in this episode. Mm-hmm. They're making him be a spy. So if he wasn't before, he is now. But <laughs> yeah, it was it was just kind of a lot of convenience and a lot of silly, silly like convenient spy stuff. But guess, then the ending was great, though. So I yeah, like oh, yeah. I love the ending. I guess part of my thing is like, why do they need to track down the professor so bad if they have a working prototype? They could just reverse engineer that <laughs> maybe with their experts. <laughs> and also, there's also the question of like, why do they? He got away. He got away with the colonel's brain or whatever it was. But it's like, can't they just find him? It seems like I mean, he's in a helicopter. They just turn the helicopter around. We've seen it happen before. They could blow him up. Yeah, I mean, they could probably do a lot of things. They, I don't sure know, they could maybe, find him. I guess they were just like, oh, well played, Six. I guess we'll let him go. <laughs> that seems to be what how they felt about it. It's like they did all this work to try and find the guy, and they're just going to let him, like, steal the colonel's body and go off, do For whatever. Sure. He deserves that. He gets a happy ending, right? And he gets. I mean, number six never gets a happy ending. Like, number six has gotten away, like, 20 times, and they're always just like, nope. You're you're back here. It's like on Star Trek. I go. It's like on Star Trek Picard. Like, okay, you have a synthetic body now, but you're still going to age out just as you would have in your regular body. This guy gets it much better. It's like, oh, he gets an extra like um thirty years in a in, well, in a dumpy dude's body, but hey, that's an extra thirty years or so. Isn't that the Blade Runner rules though? Don't Blade Runners synthetics have to age or something? Uh, I I'm just saying it. What what? I there none of them are synthetics. I'm just saying. Oh, you're talking. I mean, about no. I mean, Picard, the the right? or a syn, syn, I mean, just saying. I think that I think there's precedent for that. I think Blade Runner's whatever robot. What are they called? Synthesoids. Yeah. Ro- Robotrons. Anyway, Robotrons. Seltzman gets an extra thirty years right when he was going to die. Right. So good mm-hmm. for him. <laughs> I mean, someone died. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but no, nobody, nobody cares about that guy. Even Poor guy he... just like got switched into a body where he was just in a chair, like having a seizure for, for like a couple of days, and then goes into an old man and dies. Yeah, <laughs> like poor bastard. <laughs> yeah, but it was kind of his plan, right? Or he's in, he's he was he was on the inside. I don't think he was planning to die, but I mean, oh uh, well, I yeah, guess probably not that. But I guess that ha- that just happens to these people because that's this is spy stuff it's dangerous Um, business i always like to talk about people in the episode that look like other people so the guy in london that's trailing six i thought he Mm -hmm. looked kind of like the love child of rod serling and robert de niro (laughs) (laughs) he he looked like somebody who is a someone chasing someone in something else and i can't put my finger on what it was Mm. like maybe a movie or something maybe i'm sure i'll think of it later maybe it was taxi driver with De Niro, mate, I don't think so. I don't. I probably wasn't. I was. I was just trying to tie it in with De Niro, and <laughs> I was about to say Serpico, but that's Pacino, right? So that would have been the wrong call. I guess he maybe he kind of looked like the guy who shot Scarface in the back with a shotgun. Okay, maybe. yeah, sure. He just looks. He looks like a guy who would who would follow you. <laughs> I guess this is the thing. And then okay. later, when they're at that party, which has swinger music unlike the party in a b and c which had like Mm -hmm. yeah anyway same um, house though yeah yeah um i felt that guy that cuts in on the dance had like serious martin short energy (laughs) yeah i didn't notice that (laughs) i was gonna type scott bayo and like (laughs) okay that's cool like like ed grimley i cut it on this dance i don't even know how to do an ed grimley so (laughs) (laughs) it's been a while since i watched anything with ed grimley uh, me too. I guess, yeah, I guess he did a bit of that at the tail end of SCTV. But it's supposed know. to be whatever he's doing with Steve Martin now, it's supposed to be really good. And I haven't seen any of it. What is it? Murder buildings? Yeah, it, I know it, it looked like like NPR good, you know? I mean, it, mm, it's like streaming good, streaming good, it's NPR good, same. Yeah, it's just like it's kind of there. And I guess if you invested yourself, you'd get into it. But yeah, I don't know. It could be fantastic. I, I don't think either of us are willing to commit to TV shows other than ones that we're podcasting. True. <laughs> <laughs> the town uh, um, definitely made me think of Helen, Georgia. And, and then the professor's name was Helen. What? <laughs> so, yeah, but H-E-L-L-E-N. 
Okay, that's cool. Because I, I guess I just got thrown off because they had those establishing shots of the town. I was like, oh, it's Helen, Georgia. And then they called him Helen. I was like, <laughs> and then my brain exploded a little bit. <laughs> I I watch with subtitles since I'm taking notes and I want to make sure that I spell everything correctly. Okay. Well, I was, meanwhile, stuff. I was just confused by that. I mean, you can see how that would happen. When's the last time you went to Helen, Georgia? Honestly, it's probably been... <laughs> It's probably like the mid 2010s. It's been okay. several you a, years. You get a Wiener Schnitzel there, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not like I don't want to go. It's just you know, I've been to downtown Stone Mountain more recently than that. And okay. honestly, the last time I went to downtown Stone Mountain, I went to the Vaporwave Bar. It sounds like fun. I mean, I it's a vaporwave. Sorry, vaporwave brewery. Oh, okay. It's I'm a sorry. brewery called Outrun, and it's they've just got neon on the walls, and they have both of the Outrun games. And the vaporwave like bar would be the one on Tim and Eric with the Petite Feet song, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's sort of like that. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened there. <laughs> so that'd be cool. Um, let's see what else do I got here as far as like random. Oh, I couldn't that handwriting analysis comparison would not be proof for me. I, <laughs> oh yeah, I can't as tell. A- that's all over my stupid notes. This is like, are you kidding me? Like, he could just be a, fo- like, probably forgery is like the first year of spy school, right? Like, what, like, you can't, it's, it's another just like ridiculous thing to move the story along where it's like, and nobody when they show the side by side. It's like in very different um, thicknesses of <laughs> pin. I'm like, man, I can't, I can't, I can't rectify those two. <laughs> yeah even if it's i mean even if it was you would send that off to a lab you wouldn't just eyeball it and be like you're the same person i guess <laughs> the guy who invented the brain swapping technology shouldn't be particularly skeptical because he invented it but yeah it's um, within the realm of reason for his existence isn't it especially because yeah especially because number six is probably not going to just go out of his way to find him some i don't know nothing it was a very like kind of a slow paced episode where everything sort of felt like it was in place and uh and he had a fiance suddenly but then she just kind of is gone yeah i was i was gonna say the receipt for the like all that stuff is so convenient he just like gave her a receipt for a roll of film that would help him find the brain swap guy and all this stuff is just still in place even though here's a receipt for a relationship <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a transactional relationship and now it's over that, that's a good way to break up with someone you just present them with a receipt <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to be really horrible the receipt has all the dates the you took them on. yeah <laughs> I'd be like, this is a bill for the flan that I bought you that one time and the, that roast. When you, when you were sick and I, I, I came to your house with, you know, whatever. I, here's bill Blowers. But I paid for that. Yeah. Bill <laughs> Blowers. Cool. I do wonder if McGowan, you know, showed back up in, in England after doing Ice Station Zebra and just, you know, had a nice screaming match at them because they gave six <laughs> to fiance. <laughs> <laughs> I... Don't think that he had. I, I don't. I couldn't figure out whether he had any oversight over this episode or not, but it certainly felt like, oh, another guy. Let's give him all of our interest real quick. <laughs> They're like, oh, we can finally have six kiss someone. Although it's a pretty creepy kiss. Yeah, it was entirely creepy, and <laughs> she had really very little reason to believe him. Like, <laughs> like the guy. Sure, the guy who invented the the brain swapping, but her it's like mm -hmm. he didn't he didn't give off number six vibes she probably wasn't attracted to him yeah but you you got to look past the 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 uh facade to your yeah if they act like the person that you were in a relationship with but he like wasn't (laughs) (laughs) this brain brain swap stuff just doesn't work for me because it never feels like whoever is the swapped personality is trying to like actually the 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 one exception being probably matrix revolutions and that guy was still merely passable at it yeah, freaky friday maybe what we needed was going to do this when he was around and have him like derping Wear around the village derping around the village in the meantime with uh the colonel <laughs> in his head 
So we get like this really derpy Magoon. <laughs> I mean, that would be really fun. It was, yeah, it was, it was a little too obvious that they didn't have him in almost this entire episode because it had the whole thing where they they abduct him and it's clearly not him, and then they don't really show the the brain swapping process. But then when the 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 other the Colonel Six is driving around in London, that is Magoon because they're using yes, the <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, it's well, what they had. It kind of works bad both ways. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like that's how you know it's number six because you see it. You only you can see him. Well, that's how he's imagining himself driving around London because he imagines himself, you know, looking like his normal self. Well, probably a better version of this would just be that they show him look in the mirror and it's someone else, but then the entire episode he's just acting as himself. That would have been better actually like quantum leap it yeah quantum leap it <laughs> yeah i mean you know I, I guess it was always going to be an issue when the star of your show that doesn't have any other regulars to speak of <laughs> isn't <laughs> there that's it's kind of madness to go a lot i mean i don't know how for how production schedules and budgets and all that work but i mean couldn't they work around it <laughs> yeah i wonder whose fault this is this is definitely someone messed up Hmm. on on some level but I mean, maybe magoo and maybe magoo and burned himself out so badly that he just like needed a break and also couldn't maybe the, make the schedule they work should, they should have actually you know made this title longer do not forsake me oh my darling i dropped the ball <laughs> do not forsake me oh my darling for i am in another man's body and must must retrieve those photographs dear you're getting That's into Fiona Apple territory. Yeah, That's Fiona yeah. Apple territory there. So, which I would have been cool with well, if, they, if they had gotten that many <laughs> words on the title screen. Oh, that that would have been even better. I'm pretty sure Fiona Apple suffers from whatever the same brain thing that Pat Sherman does, because <laughs> there was that, and then there was like the the recent album of hers where it says "Fetch the Bolt Cutters," and it's just like a picture of her like staring intensely behind the behind a small frame which it just seems like big number six energy yeah okay i guess i can go with that i i I'd never really related those two except for this title but sure now um, now you have yeah i i have heard the theory although i don't put full stock into it that mcguin went to make the movie in order because he get, would get a hollywood paycheck that he could then use to finish the show i don't know if i i don't um, that, I, mean, I don't his, know if i buy that company but, it, it makes you happier with this episode, though. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, it's like I'm not mad at it. It's just like if the entire show was like this, it would be pretty boring. Like, yeah. there's, I guess it's just there's no, there's no real village to speak of. We, we're going back into the real world, which was done better at least twice already. <laughs> I guess they thought adding the fiance would be a, um, would would make it different but that just makes it confusing especially since she never comes up again <laughs> yeah and uh yeah that that we well, didn't it, need that <laughs> she almost fulfills the same role as uh as like the number two did in many happy returns this, that number two is yeah. much more excited about him though probably well, that was he, a more that was more fun of an interaction and <laughs> that that was also production order right before this yeah so yeah. it's also like well and he got here a we nice go sandwich. back into the yeah <laughs> they might who knows they might have just filmed all of it well no they would, couldn't have filmed all of it at the same time but mm. no uh, i mean i guess you could be like <laughs> in the last one they're just like let's see what happens if he gets out and then the idea is okay now that we kind of have him in that way we can send him on missions again i'm very glad the show did not end up taking that you know course but yeah and there's and in no episode order are those like those two episodes right next to each other yeah this is always a later one yeah that's just a bad call to stick them together i think so yeah i think i well yeah there's one order it puts many happy returns like right at the end isn't there i don't know there's there's probably an order to everything so um I, I order for every uh i'm looking the closest it looks like they are together is in the u.s order where many happy returns is six and this is nine 
Mm. Uh, many happy returns. Do, 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 I think do. the right way to do the show no. as far as how you watch it is you watch the arrival, you say Fallout for the end, and then you just let a random number machine choose the rest. <laughs> uh, many happy returns is number two in the uh, some ITC order that was used for an 80s run of the series. Yeah, so this, it's just, that's how seems it seems just random. Right, that's why I'm saying just random number generate your own prisoner viewing order. <laughs> the weird thing is, I think, d- did we come up with that idea before? Probably. Did I come I was... up with this? Uh, did I come up with that idea like outside of this series? I feel like maybe I was even going to do that. Like <laughs> maybe we talked about this years ago when we we're talking about doing a random number generator. Maybe for, for I don't a know. Series order. Yeah, that, that's it's a, a weird feeling. Sure. Why not? Mm. Have the general do it. The general yeah. decide. Yeah, the general likes to think about numbers. Just don't ask it why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like many happy returns is episode five. Why? <laughs> okay, it's over. That's that's what would do it. Yeah. Well, um, we did uh, get some cool trippy effects at the end with the lightning thing, and uh, I was definitely sort of like. Why the hell is he hooking himself up between the two guys? And yeah, that was kind of weird. Answered it, me. <laughs> it, it answered the question. Well, they answered the question. He's got sort of that uh, cerebro machine. But it was also, I needed number two to explain to me that he took the the other guys, or number six explained to me that that he took the other guy's body because when when uh, the scientist died and he was like tell number one i did my duty i had no idea that that meant i thought that just meant well yeah he answers to number one sure saltzman 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 Mm. you know what i mean did you did you pick up on that without having explained to you no i think i had that explained to me yeah i mean i think that's how it's supposed to run right you're supposed to have a minute of like what's going on yeah i feel like the series does a good job of um would you call it an ec- economy of explanation? They don't explain too much. Yeah. I, I Maybe one thing that doesn't quite work with this episode might not work with the next couple. I, I don't remember because I, I definitely haven't seen the uh, second production order run episodes much, right? But mm-hmm. like we like to do the what's the mind game, you know? I mean, there's a b- mind swapping in this, but there's no real mind game in this one, you know? This is not about the this is not about the village versus number six. This is about the village trying to get a guy. I mean, maybe they would do more brain swapping if they got him, but but it just seems like they just wanted Seltzman. Like his it had nothing. It was maybe that made it worse was that not only do we not have our number six, but they're also just using this other number six to get some other guy we've never heard of. Exactly. There's kind of nudge. I mean, they're nudging him along, but he's pretty okay to go along with it, it seems. And it was also kind of jarring that, I mean, the, the, the people he works with in Many Happy Returns are just a completely different set of people than he works with for with in this episode. So I'm like, that's confusing as hell. Oh yeah, because he's doing the he's stomping the black suit. Yeah, okay, he gets all that in. Yeah, how many? Who does he work for? Who does <laughs> number six work for? I don't understand. Well, they couldn't get the other guys from the last episode, and that, those, what I mean, what kind of greeting would he get it from the same guys again that already sent him off on that jet? You know. <laughs> but I mean, was it those guys who sent him off, or was it just the one guy? Okay, good point. But anyway, they'd have an awkward reuniting again, I'm sure. <laughs> they'd be like, wait, who are you now? <laughs> Especially when it's in a different body, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Th- this does feel kind of like the um, the weird fan production version of The Prisoner, I guess. Yeah, and also there was the whole thing where his fiance shows up and is like, I saw your cars here, you're back. But his car was there for many happy returns. Yeah, his car was there, and and uh, Mrs. What was her name? Mrs. Butterworth or whatever was there. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was kind of. Weird. I mean, I assume they could reset the house. You know, obviously she didn't really live there, right? So, um, although I, I'm not fine. even sure that I'm you not even they, sure that was real. You think like they many, many happier returns wasn't even a real? 
I mean, you, they, they, in real city. I feel like they would have found his safe behind the TV somewhere in that year. And I guess not. And why didn't he, you know, kind of like bop Mrs. Butterworth on the head and go get his money and stuff out of the safe back in many happy returns? That's a good question. Yeah. So, yeah, there's just a lot of contradictions in this episode. I guess that's the the, the kind of annoying itch that you can't scratch about this particular one. And then just on top of that, oh, and the actor's different. <laughs> this, Yeah, this feels like something they shouldn't. It's like time travel. Like you shouldn't. They shouldn't have dipped into this well of going outside of the village like this many times. It's like one or two times too many out of the <laughs> three times. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, it it was. Yeah, maybe that's one something you should do one time and that's it. How would it? Would, so if they did quantum leap it and we just go and played six the whole time, but it still had all the weird contradictions. Would that would that improve, not improve, make it worse? <laughs> how How would it go in that case? I just think that the colonel guy did a bad job of portraying number two. Like, he he just seemed sad. You mean six? Like, number six is six. Yes, you're right. Number six. I'm so used to uh, talking about other numbers. Uh, the guy there's who's number usually, six. Yeah, there's usually multiple number twos, right? This is the only one where we have to deal with multiple sixes. Multiple oh, wait, sixes. Well, there's schizoid, multiple man. twos. That, that was different. Too. There's multiple okay. twos. Yeah, that's also, that's like twice as many of schizoid well, yeah. man had kind of this vibe better right <laughs> yeah i enjoyed schizoid man more than this it was also i mean that wasn't a mind schizoid man was was not i mean it was total nonsense but that was amazing I mean, was, nonsense where like it was you great said, a lot of this nonsense gets a bit dull after a while uh capped by those fantastic effects at the end but <laughs> yeah him like shocking himself using the faucet to to make himself right-handed is a lot more fun than the the austrian man swapping his brain into a a guy right right that's uh, him electrocuting himself to change hands is a lot more fun than him discovering that the the camera store still has his roll of film from a year earlier <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then it's like you could argue that the finding the the information in the film was interesting but it all seemed totally arbitrary like Oh sure, put the name, the letters of the guy's name, and then take the numbers, and then put the numbers together. I, maybe like he set all of it up because he knew he was going to have to find Seltzman later, but that doesn't really make sense. And also, a, if any of it was gone, he <laughs> wouldn't have been able to do it. Or his magic glasses, which is also stupid. I I don't know. Sometimes spy stuff just irritates me with how like some cool thing is super convenient. It's at least when James Bond does it, it's like. Oh well, this pen shoots someone in the head and blows their brains out. It's like, well, you can see a lot of uses for that. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. just brute force. I mean, I think that was one of the reasons many happy returns is a great episode because he shows back up disheveled with nothing. Right here, he's mm -hmm. like in a different body, but he's he's got his pad, he's got his money. I mean, he, he should all he wants to do is take a vacation. He should take the vacation before doing the spy stuff. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, it, for for a minute, I was just like, well, you're you're out. You know, you've got a weird Frasier body, but you're out. So you could just, you know, I mean, you could have a live fun your time doughy life, live your nice doughy life. You get, you have your safe money, you have your apartment. I mean, he you're going to work out. He could, he might not have his dashing countenance, but he can get himself into shape. He knows I how mean, to do that. Technically, he could probably become a colonel if he wanted to. He is a colonel. I mean, he could. I mean, I'm saying he could have the job of colonel if he. Oh, wants. he could like step into that role. <laughs> he just go into the role, yeah. If he knew who he was. Which... Except then he wakes. He's in Six's pad, so yeah. I, I think the mind game in this episode is maybe on the viewer. <laughs> I think it's almost like they had to put the fiance in there because that's how you know that he just can't stay like the the less attractive man. It's like, no, I can't, I can't sudden, I can't like hook up with my suddenly fiance who I have. <laughs> yeah, my uh, suddenly fiance that I have. Suddenly oh. fiance. Yeah. yeah. And, and you notice that, and also when they started uh, committing to having Patrick McGowan do a voiceover about halfway through the episode, he just said everything that happened was also pretty bad. I hope he actually phoned that in like he was in the stage phoning it in. <laughs> I uh, I don't think so because the phone doesn't sound as good as that did. But you add some echo onto the recording. Add some echo. 
Didn't wasn't it like it was kind of like, a reverby voiceover? It was a full. You just like when you're when you're talking on the phone, it's like. But he went away. He left the podcast. He's gone. Oh, it sounds like this. See? Oh yeah, I'm let's not podcast a... that way. This is bad, though. It's like what you sound like on the phone. Right. Okay. Okay. He's he's leaving the podcast again. Was that worth it? <laughs> I don't know. I just like saying he's leaving the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody can see my head duck out of the frame, and they th- think that I actually left. <laughs> But um, a lot of prisoners have like weird contradictions and pieces that don't fit. But it seems like it's because the script is smart. Whereas this has weird contradictions and things that don't fit because it seemed like the script needed like three more drafts. Yeah, it just had it just had to get from point A to point B, and that was like the entire thing, really. And right. and there wasn't any. The only twist or double cross or whatever was just at the very end. And again, that was great, but it didn't like make the entire rest of the episode fun to watch. Okay, so like, now you are making me like this episode less. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm here for. Okay. <laughs> I I don't I mean, I don't think this is a a hated episode. This isn't like one of those where uh it's not shades of people... gray from Star Trek. Yeah, or um or what like the 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 next generation episodes that were just copy pastes of the scripts from the original series like what the naked now the or naked like now that. and then i uh, was it um code of honor there we go Th- this episode is a lot better in code of honor i'll give it that seal of approval yeah or like profit and lace you remember code of honor which one was that again i know i know what it is i just can't that's remember. where they pra- that's where they visit planet africa oh yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> Now, yeah, it's you... such a generic, it's such a generic title that it's hard to remember what it is. If you put the episode on and you close your eyes, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like there was no reason it had to be Planet Africa. <laughs> but apparently yeah, the, sounds... first, the first so director like... was like actually racist or something, it seems. Because he got replaced halfway through with, uh, I don't remember who they replaced him with, but that turned out to be one of the main Trek directors. So, was that like more racist than anything in the original series? Yes, that's amazing. <laughs> Quite a feat there. Even the cast looks like weirdly uncomfortable in that episode. <laughs> Jeez. Well, this is um. So it's better on than I am, that. This episode on IMDb. That. On IMDb, this episode has a rating of seven point three. Okay, what it's does Code hot. of Honor have? <laughs> okay, on Star Trek uh, Code of Honor. That's that's all you need to type in. Seven point seven point three uh, for this one. Well, I was gonna go go over some the the few do do the few episodes of the Prisoner that are rated a little bit lower, but there isn't anything that far. God, why is this so hard? Uh, Star Trek. Code of honor. I can find this. It's like episode four or something. That's right. That's right. Do 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 do. Some music for you. Uh, do, 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 Live do, do. Oh, like, it went straight idea. to season seven, of course. Oh yeah, because <laughs> you want to catch up. Because you want to catch up with where you left off. Well, it's like how uh, podcasts. Code do. of honor five point one, that's rated lower than I Station Zebra. <laughs> I'm, Which is, I'm uh, just surprised it's even rated that high, to be honest. <laughs> I guess uh, people watch Naked it Now eyes, six, but... Naked Now six point five. Okay, so yeah, this is pretty rough going. How about us? Uh, um, Shades of Grey. Is that also season one? That's season two. That's a clip show. It's the end of season two. Oh, okay, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, because that was it. Was that like a writer's straight thing too? Like, yes. was some kind of issue. Three point three. Wow. All right. Although yeah. um, I've talked to the guy that had to compile the footage for that episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, but look, the, the measure of a man, 9.1. Well, yeah, that's because that's a good episode. <laughs> it's like the best episode that's ever. I was just going to be like, hey, look, there's a bright side. That yeah. that series got good pretty quickly. Yeah. What, what does Times Squared have? Because that's, that's one I like that a lot. Three? But I feel like, yeah, that's season two, Times Squared. Two. 
Right, dude. I love how this episode of our prisoner podcast is just to turn into look up ratings, ratings. of Star Trek Next Generation episodes uh, <laughs> 7.5. Okay, I was just curious on that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, prisoner episodes. Yeah, okay. Uh, let, do not let, forsake let... me, oh my darling, is the 7.3. The next two episodes are 7.0 and 7.3. Okay. And then uh the last two are are 7.8 7.7. 7. Uh most of these episodes are higher. Most yeah, so... of them are eight eight somethings. Well, I but think the uh... lowest rated episode is uh Living in Harmony, which is next week's, I believe, which is like an the old Wild west, west one, I think. Version. Yeah. I've never seen that before. I I think I kind of skipped over that one when i you know would view this in the past so because mm -hmm. you're like you want all the village stuff and then you see cowboy hats and you're like huh what so we'll, yeah, we'll find I... out next week um the last fallout is i think is mostly a love it or hate it so <laughs> that is that is a uh, pretty highly rated but not as highly rated as uh, a lot of the other ones 7.7 because right. .7. i it initially so. just pissed people off right and then <laughs> I mean, it could people still slowly... be pissing people off. It might piss me off. Who knows? Yeah, we'll find out. So, um, so far, though, yeah, I would say, like, you could probably just skip this episode and it would be fine. <laughs> True. I guess that's why there's, like, 13 episode um, orders for this, right? People sometimes just watch the, the first production run and fall out and then they're finished, right? I think there are so many reasons why there are different episode orders, which just... Uh, it's just part of the charm it's just chaos right like <laughs> sure i can i've decided that this number two definitely comes after that one i'm just saying this is the first one where you could probably just leave it out and it would be okay it's fun how i think two of the orders listed on wikipedia are just like some guy who's a, a fan who made who made a <laughs> yeah here's a guy who is uh who arranged an order for a pbs station yeah, see, that's about as good as using a random number generator anyway, right? So let the general decide how you watch The Prisoner. Yeah, that's that's the motto of this podcast, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, the the Prisoner U.S. homepage recommended order, and then there's the the Unmutual website's recommended order. That I think doesn't more, count. That's Unmutual. More fan orders. Yeah, Unmutual. <laughs> there's more fan orders than there are official orders. <laughs> are there more... I guess there would be more fan and, orders than there would be episodes. <laughs> well, and I've refer I've referenced one several times that where they uh, are missing three episodes, and I didn't really look that up until recently. But I assumed that was like a country or something or a region. And no, nope, it's a viewing order recommended by fan er editor Sir Quacky. Oh, gotta trust Sir Quacky. Yeah. So if that's what I'm oh, saying. So, Sir Qua so you trust Sir Quacky, but you don't trust the Unmutual website? Correct. Is well, no, one's, on? no, one's, okay. no one declared Sir Quacky Unmutual. I mean, maybe I will. Okay. Maybe that's, okay. Maybe that's my Sir legacy. Quacky. <laughs> Unmutual! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to try harder at the duck noise. It's hard to do that. I was trying to say I love yeah. you in a duck voice. Ow. Ow. That's not good. That's like a creepy baby. Like the <laughs> baby that's going to eat you. Like a zombie baby. That's what a zombie baby sounds like. <laughs> uh, now it's an exorcist territory. <laughs> yeah, creepy baby. <laughs> well, she was like 13, right? How old was she in that movie? I forgot. I think pretty young. I think young enough that, that, that like they didn't tell her what all the words she was saying were. <laughs> Right. So anyway, that, but she wasn't a baby is my point. So no. What if they just remade the exorcist, but it was a baby. <laughs> as a priest? That'd be so funny. No, it's just a baby, but it's like this. No, as the priest, the... as the priest. The baby oh, sure. The priest. Okay. No, no. The baby is like possessed, but the priest is like a three-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's cool. I had the idea yesterday to have a TV show called Mr. Baby. It's basically... <laughs> It's basically exactly the same as Married with Children, but Al Bundy is played by a baby. Sure, I'd watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Dubbed over, of course, by, um, I don't know. I, I guess he's dead, but Lorenzo Music would have been a good choice. I mean, there 
the, we're almost to the point where you could make that because I watched Cocaine Bear this past week and there was a trailer for a movie that is like one of those movies where like the dogs are walking around and talking with like, you know, CGI mouths, mm-hmm. but it's like R rated and they're all cursing the whole time. So yeah. Like, we, I feel like we're very close to, <laughs> to well, yeah, we have ta- a baby. We were talking offline about um, how you, you know, um, Oh crap! Sorry, I was looking at something and trying to talk at the same time, and it derailed me. Um, oh, oh, Winnie the Pooh murder movie. Yeah, yeah that looks like crap, though. It's supposed to be <laughs> it terrible. Looks really bad. It's supposed to be. T- I mean, basically, you have an image. It's Winnie the Pooh, blood and honey. That's all you need. Anything else is like going to ruin it for you, you know. Cocaine Bear was actually good. Oh yeah, did, did you go see it? It was really good. Uh, the editing was a little iffy, but the the actual like the bear looked good and it was funny. It had a lot of like interesting funny choices in it okay here here we go i was gonna say this is all i know about cocaine bear which is this meme oh the oh yeah that's (laughs) i did see that yes (laughs) (laughs) which is uh fozzy bear with a machine gun so i was like so that's the thing though i see i see that image i see cocaine bear i mean i'm already pretty satisfied right but i I mean you know there's the the classic meme of the bear covered in snow and it says i love cocaine that was like from 11 years ago or something was it fozzy bear no it was a regular bear it was just okay. like early memes well uh, okay well i'm just like we that's why we're smarter now because now we put fozzy bear in our yes. bear memes <laughs> yes now we we have it work on two levels that's a true sign of intelligence more. that's that's yes, how we move we... into the future Scarface we have crashed the there. problem. We we have made the hyperloop of memes. <laughs> now we've we've solved. Well, the... well, someone else made the hyperloop of memes. I just showed it to you, and you'd already. That's kind of what happens. Yeah. If, if you hear about a thing, someone else probably made it. I think the only time I've actually tried to make a meme was when I was snowed in several years ago. That's, that means I was really high on cocaine. Um, <laughs> 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 and I <laughs> and I made um. I took like pictures of like babies and kittens and then put a nice script font, like quotes from like Nietzsche and stuff. Okay. <laughs> sure. I thought it was there funny was a, at the time. I made it. I saw of, them and forgot about them. I might have. I, I, I had a couple of memes go like viral. I made a lot of them. And then eventually I started realizing that I was making a bunch of dumb garbage and not profiting <laughs> from any of it. Like that was sort of the main thing. I'm like, well, something goes viral. What? What now? I didn't you make, make a, any money. You should have made an NFT. I guess I could. I thought of, I actually thought of doing that when NFTs first came out. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make a bunch of these and scam everybody. But it's I didn't. I just so. like that. It's still, they've been around for what, like two or three years now. And like no one can explain what they are and how they work. Still, I can explain what they are, but it's like they have no. It's still just a scam. People are trying to like inflate their worth so they could sell them to somebody else. It's there's no an actual value. You can right click and save any of them. That's a good point. Okay. <laughs> Although, uh, yeah, I, I've found some images that seem to be a little more like difficult to grasp these days. I mean, the easy way to, I guess, the easy way to explain it would be like, take this podcast recording, um, don't put it. Don't put it on any podcast apps. Sorry, this is the lost worth, episode. Say it's worth say it's worth a thousand dollars. This episode's you worth sell it to someone for a thousand dollars. They buy it from you I for a thousand dollars, hoping that they would sell it to someone. They buy it from you, hoping they could sell it to someone else for ten thousand dollars. Mm. And That's... they buy it from them, hoping they could sell it to someone for a hundred thousand dollars. The contents haven't changed. So that's like a, we all agree to this Ponzi scheme sort of thing, and the person farther yes. down the line is a, the, the farther down the line you are, the more of a sucker you are. It's like a Ponzi pole. Okay. Instead of a pyramid, it's like a pole. Right. Just like okay. you climb the climb the dumb stupid pole. I'm sure someone is very mad at me right now listening to this podcast, but you know, well, well, they won't well, because it's just one person heard it because they bought the NFT of this podcast. Oh yeah. Martin so. Shrekley. Congratulations, Martin Shrekley. You've you've <laughs> you've learned about the Ponzi bowl. <laughs> there we go. Great. Okay. I bet so. that album's terrible though, really. That Wu Tang record. They put out another record around the same time and it was just <laughs> absolutely awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
maybe the prisoner needed an NFT episode. I I wouldn't be surprised. They they could definitely make a crypto prisoner. <laughs> like, <laughs> the crypto um, prisoner. Well, they could just uh, just do it like um, what's his name, Edward Snowden, make him like the prisoner, right? Right. Make him the number six, okay. and they've they've imprisoned him using crypto and NFTs. And there's like, like NFTs behind the wall to... of. It's like you have to code all this stuff before you can leave the room. Yeah, he has to like flash NFTs to to find the Austrian guy who invented the Hyperloop. Wasn't he stuck in Russia now? He can't go to Austria. I think he kind of is stuck in Russia, but I don't think I. I guess he's doing okay. I have no idea. The last thing I, last thing I remember was he put out some kind of like techno track and it was like Snowden. Like that was his his musician name was just Snowden, oh, and it was okay. extremely like mediocre. It was extremely mediocre song, and the video had him just like on a computer, just sort of like I'm, nodding I'm, his head. I'm bopping to the music. That's what I do. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't, th- I don't think he's much of a songwriter. I think he lost his job with the government, so <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, what it, I don't know. Maybe they could switch him into another body and then uh, have him come back, and then maybe that's what happened. Him. Maybe the guy bopping to the Snowden track is is some you know elderly Austrian professor. <laughs> yeah, he took his body and <laughs> and then Snowden died and, and after made being electrocuted mediocre, and made mediocre beats with his new body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay um i i feel like we've now run this episode into the ground um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> um well i was like i mean I, this is one where i was like man am i gonna be able to talk about this for 30 plus minutes and well we ended up talking about star trek the next generation again so <laughs> isn't that always sort of how it is though like the, the the less there is to talk about the more you get to talk about other things yeah so again that that's this episode you if you i don't know there's only 17 i guess you're gonna watch it but you you, if if, like this was scratched on your dvd it'd be okay you won't hate yourself for watching this episode right okay that that's that's our that's our um vote of confidence for this episode you you won't (laughs) you won't you won't won't slit your wrist because you watch this episode (laughs) (laughs) you won't you won't be just screaming the whole time why didn't i just watch ice station zebra that's what McGowan did when he saw this episode. <laughs> I, I wonder if he like regrets regretted doing Ice Station Zebra. I guess I we'll never know because he I got, didn't research it. He got to be on a nice colorful poster and hang out in Hollywood for a while. They probably have better craft service. Yeah, I'm sure it was a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, as for this podcast. Where are, where are we? That's actually your thing. Okay, you say that. Oh, where are we? Podcast you podcast us on Patreon. Support. Throw us a few bucks to pay the servers. Uh, when you I also... was like, I don't know where we are. I I, I think I'm. Oh, where Twitter. we are? Twitter. I think. I oh, sorry, the Prisoner Pod on Twitter and Facebook. You think I could remember that? The Prisoner Pod. I I mean <laughs> I sometimes I have to look it up. <laughs> and um, then you the. Check out Matt and the Luke's Sci-Fi Sanctuary for sci-fi films. Check out Time Enough podcast, Twilight Zone recap, currently somewhere in season three. Check out Monster Mash, Monster Hunter podcast. Check out Luke Loves Pokemon, so you can listen to Luke loving Pokemon. Check out The Game Game Show, it's a game show about games. Some of those sound like questions. When you do, the Check Monster out Mash a cult. and the Game Game Show sound like questions. I can't help myself making everything as weird as possible. Check <laughs> out Occult Disney, where they talk about the occult influence on Disney films and uh-huh. TV. Really? Um, <laughs> this this week, this is recording schedule. I, I don't know when it will be released in relation to this episode, but we, we're, we're taking a look at the Gnome Mobile okay cool (laughs) (laughs) which is the last movie disney was involved with personally and Mm -hmm. um seems to be tied in with bohemian grove somehow (laughs) okay (laughs) like they were gonna screen it on the trees there or something it was really weird i don't know i guess i don't know enough about it yet so um i'll 
All but right. Well, make that journey. Probably, you could probably go listen to that now if you want. I mean, the listener, you with the NFT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because this show is like two months behind all the others. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. So everything we're talking, this is the distant past you're hearing us from. We've probably switched bodies by now. Maybe. I don't know. That just seemed like a cut. I couldn't spot. think of any. I couldn't think of a better way to end it. Than that. I was like, eh? I was screaming. just looking at Ice Station Zebra trivia, and I found like trivia that I should have put into this prisoner episode. I think. Well, what is it? I, I... Oh, it's just that apparently the story for um the entire story for this episode was like a hastily rewritten uh, Danger Man script. Okay. Yeah. I. I. I that explains. Makes sense. Pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, that'll be the real cut then. <laughs> I mean, it's like the, you can add to the episode if it's only been over for two seconds. You could just you could just insert that in the middle. No, it's at the end, right where it's supposed <laughs> to be. <laughs> oh God. I like it. We end it. We discuss. We discuss how it ended, and then and then there's something else. You really like really, I mean, trivia sections for like on Wikipedia and IMDb are both like really kind of slapdash. Like some of yeah. these episodes have no trivia at all, and then some of them have like that one episode where I knew where I found out that he like strangled the director or whatever. It was like that was one of the rare. Uh, I should have really read the Alex Cox book you sent me, but I haven't had time <laughs> at this point. It's like, well, uh, probably I, read it I, after. I, see, I, yeah, I don't, I don't read the chapters until after we do the episode. So, ah, which I are you know. finding out a lot of stuff that I haven't found out? Um, I mean, that's that's what's one of the chief reasons I've been rocking out the um, maybe he's not a spy theory. Interesting. Because that was, he was like, you know, there's no reason to think he's a spy. In fact, there's reasons to think he's not a spy. So, um, I think, I thought that was an interesting take. He, um, that one, I, I don't quite, I, that's the one where I was, oh, yeah, Schizoid Man and in general should definitely be flipped in order from how we did it. Uh, that's, I guess, mm. that, that's where I got that idea from. It's a real short read, though. It's just like, you know, it's not a long book and you can, you know, just like, yeah, wow, I've just like been super fast. Been so bad about getting I've been buying books and not reading them for like the last year or two and it's like I've been really bad about like yeah, I bought the book that like the Talking Heads drummer wrote or whatever cuz like it has a bunch of apparently has a ton of he he like escalates the shit talking about David Byrne like <laughs> to a fever pitch apparently and I really wanted to read that cuz Let's see I what know. I let's see what I have on here that I have not read. If I pay for a book, I probably will read it pretty quickly. I'm reading the new um, Star Trek Strange New Worlds book. so Interesting. Which is an author we talked to on the podcast. So, um, The guy who wrote all his other books? Uh, he wrote the Kenobi book. Kenobi book. We've Weird. had two Star Trek authors on. We had Dayton Ward on for Nemesis. Right, and, uh, John Jackson Miller on for and and Dane Ward basically. I mean, he's written some other stuff. He basically writes Star Trek and uh, John Jackson Miller. We had on for Star Wars because he writes Trek and Star Wars a lot. I think I was thinking of the the Nemesis guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, the one we did Star Wars with is the new Star Trek book. So, um, ah. so I, I, I'm like twenty percent into it, you know. So, uh, but yeah, since I actually paid for it, I mean, on Kindle, it's a have it digitally but i was like oh, i gotta read it yeah that's what's on here now uh things i should read that i have not read because there i have a shitload on here uh, a few more star trek books but i gotta go to the bottom and find out what i really missed that i I'm like why didn't i read that yet there's some art the, the yacht rot book i need to read that yeah um unfortunately one of the earliest ones i bought that i haven't read yet is dune and i'm just like Maybe that's where all of my book backlog stems from, is I'm just afraid to start reading Dune. <laughs> I'm like, uh, a book I'm about afraid a, I'll hate it. A book about a tribe called Quest. That sounds good. The Vinyl Frontier, the story of the Voyager Golden Record. The Caped Crusader, Batman and the Rise of Nerd Culture. 
everything I need to learn, I learned in the Twilight Zone. I should probably read that. I, I've read several Twilight Zone books, so. Um, yeah, I love reading books that are like nonfiction books about entertainment. Like I have. That's where I've been on recently, yeah. Pr like I have a Prince book that was just about, pretty much just about Purple Rain. And I have one that's like a replacements book that's all the replacement stuff. Metropolis, A History of the City. That could be fun. Yeah. I just have a lot of books here. Uh, many well, I, I don't right. feel as bad now. You have way more books than I have. Uh, Crichton's b b autobiography probably goes written. The, sh the recent hmm. Shatner one probably goes written. <laughs> oh, yeah. How with, many? With. I have like hundreds of okay. books on my iPad. Huh. Cash by Johnny Cash. Got to read that. Book on Citizen Kane. Got to read that. Yeah. Well, yeah, your book backlog is way bigger than mine is. The Templars, The Road to Ruin. Okay. I got a couple of books that are just like motivational self-help books that I haven't read, and I feel like I need a book to motivate me to read the books to motivate me to do things. See, I, I, I feel more like uh, if I want to do that, reading like the metaphysical books, you know? Yeah, no, there's one that's just about like our art, artistic process because I'm like so fucking have been blocked so much for the past uh, five years or so. Jim Henson, the biography. There's one I got to read. Hmm. There's the Dune books. I've only read the first Dune book. I, th I think that's the thing. You don't really need to go past the first Dune book. I kind of want to read the one where he's just like a turns into a giant sandworm is just like it's that's in all what caps. I he's thought screaming. But I got into the second no. book and I very quickly just like quit reading uh, it. it wasn't a decision I just quit reading it you know like just like how I yeah. stopped watching the flash well just because <laughs> I say that I think I want to watch it doesn't mean that I actually do want to watch it because that was a, that whole thing when I listened to your 101 Dalmatians episode and like the description of that like metaphysical dog book like made me so angry I was like <laughs> enraged I'm like that it it was the same kind of feeling when I read the the um the synopses of like the um like the 2001 sequels where it's like oh I got uh, those on the my giant ear. the giant baby merges with fucking Dave and then merges with the ship and they become a being that goes and does a bunch of shit and makes volcanoes erupt and I'm just like I, hope I hate that's the when writers language in the book <laughs> I I just like I hate when I I don't know how to describe that besides like writer shit like when people are just like oh well, I can write anything I want so I'll just write like the dumbest insane shit like um I, that almost goes back to like the last Narnia book which is basically just they die and go to heaven, which I did not That's like a as a kid. Ended, right? I didn't like that at all as a kid because to me it was like boring. It's just like, oh, really? Not only is it like conveniently wrapped up, but it's conveniently wrapped up with like the most like ethereal bullshit that ever existed. Anyway, That's my, my active reading screen at the moment. Uh, okay, cool. Star Trek books, a few Twilight Zones for reference, of course. Uh, Roger Ebert, I hated, hated, hated this movie. The Power <laughs> Geography, that was a fun one. And a uh, Cattle Kingdom, the hidden history of the Cowboy West. Yeah, I like the fact that I like almost it's almost 50 50. I agree, disagree with Roger Ebert. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to agree with Ebert, but he's just he was a good writer, you know. Yeah, that's like, the thing. Like, it's I, I think I like to read bad reviews of movies that i love you know yeah it's like his writing is good enough that you don't care if you agree with him or not because it's i mean this pink flamingos down. yeah his pink flamingos review is great <laughs> where he said something like i feel like i had to eat shit or something like that i can't something remember along, what it was. <laughs> along those lines yeah where, where, where am i now on that one i am at and heck what, oh this is the psycho remake i'm on now Oh, that one's good. Yeah, he he definitely smack talks the uh the psycho remake. <laughs> hmm. I I feel like I watched part of that and then just stopped. Like it felt like a complete waste of time. <laughs> Was it? Uh, I, view, I viewed Hitchcock Psycho a week ago, attending this new version. I felt oddly as if I were watching a provincial stock company doing the best it could <laughs> without the Broadway cast. <laughs> I was reminded of the child prodigy who was summoned to perform for a famous pianist. The child climbed into the piano stool and played something by Chopin with great 
speed and accuracy when the child had finished the great musician patted it on the head and said you can play the notes someday you may be able to play the music <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like it's funny course, that's that a that's... psycho remake so you know you that's... can talk shit about that one yeah well that, that's the thing is like specifically that psycho remake was like he he did I, and it's like it's i think it's telling that i can't remember whether i actually watched it or not or if i watched I, like, I, I clips didn't. of it i saw a clip but it was like it was like this thing where he was trying to make the exact same thing but but like without it being good, you know, <laughs> uh, that's how I felt about, oh God, that total recall fucking remake, even though I only got halfway through it, I was like, stop reminding me of the better movie. Like it just <laughs> had all these like little references. It was like all these little references. And then also like a bunch of lens flare. It was a combination of lens flare and like super washed out colorless. Are you ever going to do that? Oh, uh, some, someday. Uh, I have, I haven't gotten that schedule back on track so uh, nah. tomorrow i will because it's march and i'm gonna send out a few e emails just because it's march gotcha <laughs> um oh radio yeah, I mean, flyer the first line here radio flyer pushes so many buttons that i wanted to start pushing back <laughs> whoa <laughs> anyway that's why again i'm reading uh, those are both shitty movies so i should find one that's actually good to quote from that's kind of how i felt about forrest gump actually <laughs> yeah Oh, I wow. wonder if he hated Forrest Gump. There's a he movie here didn't. called Rape Squad. <laughs> Is that a Chinese movie? No, but it's from 1975, starring Peter Brown. He does not sound Chinese. Huh. Cause there's definitely like, uh, there were a couple of Kung Fu movies where I realized the same guy directed all of them. And, uh, and I looked at his like IMDb page. And he had like 80 movies. And some of them were literally like a series that was called Touched. No, oh, it was called Raped by an Angel. And there were like Ow. five of them. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, God, I just couldn't. I was like, I can't look any further into this. I'm just going to assume it was uh, tasteless comedy or something. Yeah, I'm sitting there scrolling through. I haven't actually come across one I would go to bat for. There's a few where I wouldn't be like, I hate this movie, but nothing. I want. Like Renaissance Man, I wouldn't go to bat for it, you know? I don't remember hating that, but. Mm. <laughs> the Six. Oh, that's a sports movie. That was good. I thought that maybe that was. A, no, that's The Sixth Day. Okay. Yeah, da, da, da. Yep. I haven't found anything that's actually good. Oh, well, Species isn't actually good. Species 2 is a good one. No. I didn't <laughs> see the second one. I first saw the first one. It wasn't good. Oh, okay. I'll stand. Uh, Spice World. I, I, you can't put that in your I hate this movie thing, right? I haven't seen it, but I don't think that. I think that's one of those misunderstood films that probably is actually. Really oh, good. oh, here's a hit. Uh, I hated this movie review for Starship Troopers. Okay. I mean, every, I, that, everyone hated it when it came out, except for people that got it, right? So I, I loved it, but. Starship Troopers is the most violent kitty movie ever made. I call it a kitty movie not to be insulting, but to be accurate. Its action, characters, and values are pitched at 11-year-old science fiction fans. Yeah, <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I rewatched that just last week, and I'd forgotten like how violent it is. <laughs> it's like, you think of it, uh, in my head it was like, because... I guess because of the tone of it, it's like in my head it was like less violent than Robocop, but it's like <laughs> no. no, it's way more violent. Corpses everywhere. Bugs have no buildings, no technology, no clothes, nothing but the ability to attack, fight, kill, and propagate. They exist not as an alien civilization, but as pop-up enemies in a space war. That's not <laughs> a negative review. That's the point of the movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a satire. He's just I mean, nobody it. understood Showgirls either. Yeah, he's explaining it, but he doesn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> human society recruits starship troopers to fight the bug their method is to machine gun them to death this does not work very well <laughs> yeah see that you're explaining why the movie's good <laughs> you're explaining how people it doesn't lose really wars. matter since the bugs aren't important except as props for the interminable action scenes and as an enemy to justify the film's quasi-fascist militarism <laughs> you're explaining the movie <laughs> And saying you hate it, so I don't know. I maybe God he hated it. Maybe it doesn't like satire. Wow, I it looks like Ron DeSantis just took control of the the district where Disney is away from Disney. Yeah, it happened last year, but maybe the law went into effect now. 
apparently this is some new thing. Is this this article is published like thirty minutes ago? Maybe as of March first is they, they passed the law last year, but uh, that's it had insane. a it had a certain amount of time before it took place. Yeah, that's when they were pissed at Disney. They did that. So <laughs> I I I was aware of some type of something or other, but it's so weird that. But they're getting the boot. It can, their, keeps their, happening. They don't get to have their um their kingdom anymore. They don't have to. They don't get to have their own fire department anymore, or something like that. So now everyone who lives nearby has to pay for their fire department. Something like that. I don't know. Something. Um, Yeah, I think it only screws over people who live near there. The the fun news, I guess, was reading about um, Scott Adams, you know, shooting himself in the head. Wait, what? Did Scott Adams shoot himself in the head? Metaphorically, he. Did you see this? The Dilbert guy, right? I saw, saw that. Him? Yes, I saw that. <laughs> that whole thing where all of his strips got taken out, but I didn't know. He, if you if you told me he shot himself in the head, literally, I would have believed it. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of occurred to me that. Yeah, what did you read? What he actually said? Yeah, it sounded kind of like disjointed schizophrenic <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, it was pretty wild and just like it was like he was trying to sound as racist as possible. <laughs> I mean, he's I. I think he was trying to make some kind of point in some kind of artistic way, but it just sounded like it just sounded like nonsensical ramblings <laughs> and maybe nobody paid attention to how racist he is until now, but he was I, always I think people had an idea. Yeah. I definitely was like, I'm not going to look at this guy's stuff like a 10 years ago or 15, yeah. I, I, I remember quite a long time ago being like, Oh yeah. That's right. I mean, I never thought Dilbert was funny either. So that, you know, I wouldn't have, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was okay compared to other comic strips, but that's just like the lowest bar. The best comic strip of course is Garfield minus Garfield. Yeah. And that's not even a published <laughs> strip. That's a, a hacked strip or I don't know. I still think far side is probably the best, but then, Boss Incorporated have published their own Garfield minus Garfield books now. Well, really? I could like yeah. buy one. Jim Davis <laughs> is awesome. like down with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. It's Probably amazing cause... that Jim Davis is like both admitted that he only made Garfield to make money and also is just letting other people make money off Garfield <laughs> just left and right. Oh, yeah. That's why the Garfield eats the debacle is so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great that the guy is just or it's just that he's a non-hypocritical capitalist just like yeah sure sure make money off garfield who gives a shit you make you him know, f- make a restaurant yes i do know about garfield eats where you were you, you know sending me up? like a video of the guy yes, like yes. trying to do something else? okay do you know he also tried to create a, a original character for the restaurant that was a hybrid between himself and garfield called nate field or nat field or something <laughs> i don't think i knew that <laughs> And it's that's a pretty terrifying looking character. I wonder if I, if I search the Garfield eats. Oops, I spelled that. Uh, Nate Field, maybe. Mm. He just you know he crossed. I his tried. Name. I tried, but I didn't find a Nate Field. Okay, I might have gotten the name wrong. So, uh, but you could. I didn't Gar- think that you could get Garfacino there. I didn't know that guy. I didn't realize that guy was like doing some intentionally weird shit until you sent me that video of him like explaining his whatever the hell. Well, you thought the whole thing was a scam. I was like, no, it wasn't that. I thought it was just scam. Yeah, it was so poorly done that it feels like it was scam. It was like uh, like dumb Starbucks. Yeah, you ever watch Nathan for you? No, it's you get what you you would get like um, lasagna. You watch the show, coffee, which oh. (laughs) <laughs> uh nathan for you the guy who made dumb starbucks oh no i didn't see that <laughs> it's really good you should watch it i mean it's it's really really good that guy is and he has a newer show that's on like hbo called uh in the the front of remember. garfield eats had on written next to the sign love me feed me don't leave me which is <laughs> one, it's a quote from the movie, not the comic strip. And it's, uh, I think the comic strip is Love Me, Feed Me, Never Leave Me. So he changed that. And it's in Comic Sans. <laughs> I never, I never heard that quote, but That's I think. because you didn't watch the Bill Murray Garfield movie. I guess I didn't. <laughs> um, 
people oh, that were maybe. older than three didn't wouldn't watch that. I've seen it because I think Hannah saw it once because it was like fifty yen DVD when she was three at the time. Okay, <laughs> but we didn't make it through the sequel. <laughs> Damn, well, it's still incredible that Bill Murray just made those because he wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I right, I think he might be joking when he said he saw those about the president. So. I mean, you would if anybody else said that, I would believe that. But the considering like how much he's resisted making anything that's like I don't know, the cash in for the most part, I mm. I kinda do believe it. Okay, maybe. I don't know. Uh I guess I'm gonna stumble off to work. So uh All right, cool. Um maybe next week. I don't know. I don't think I have yeah, anything maybe. scheduled. We'll see what happens, but I, I guess we do have to get to Jackie Chan when we got some time. Yeah, for sure. Maybe we should do that. Let's just do, commit to doing that next and I'll just commit to watching it. Yeah. And we'll maybe same time, same place, uh, hopefully. So, unless, I mean, you know, it's something cool. Easy. Obviously, we can recalibrate. But... Yep. Yeah. Oh, I All right, then. 